the advice I always give to people is you start with comments. Don't start with writing posts. No, actually stay off publishing content for, for like three, four weeks, a month. Okay. Only, only, only participate in the comments and in the conversations within the replies of other people's posts. Only do that. Why? Comments are much faster. But writing posts, writing just one sometimes takes an, an hour plus. You yeah, know that. I know. It's much faster, A. Second of all, commenting is also writing. Like, we might not realize it, but it actually is. You're writing. And this then helps you build this habit of showing up. I like to say that 50% of success on LinkedIn, I attribute to showing up, just showing up. The other part is everything else. But Welcome to the very first episode of the GruCast. Uh, today we're going to talk about LinkedIn copywriting and brands, personal branding. And who better to invite to the studio than Yasmin Alic himself. Hey. Hey Al, how's it going? Thank you for the invite, man. This has been a... How are you doing? <laughs> this has been a long time coming, I feel like, between yeah. you and me. People might not know, but I feel like we missed each other at least three times. I think it was two times. We actually scheduled the show two times. Then we had to reschedule and once again. Go. So <laughs> we're yeah, busy, but people, we're here now. Good. <laughs> so good to have you on the show. Thank you for coming. Um, I really wanted to have you uh, on the first episode um, because obviously I'm going to talk about LinkedIn and I think you're the best to invite at the moment to talk about this field. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It is a pleasure. Honestly, it is a pleasure and whatever you want to talk about, let's, let's just dive right in. You know, I can talk about LinkedIn 24 seven, whatever it is. <laughs> okay. Let's dive in. So English professor turned out to be LinkedIn and copywriting expert and now brand strategist. How does that happen? Uh, a lot of failure, man. <laughs> I feel like everything I've done has led me to this point. So I was a teacher first. Uh, I was teaching English and German. I've traveled the world teaching. I've done pretty well, dare I say so myself. But uh, I just didn't see the long-term game there, to tell you the truth. Like, I genuinely didn't. Like, nothing was happening mm -hmm. in the education space. Even though I was working abroad, I had a really good job. I, I had just come off uh, winning an, an international award. So I had a conversation with a friend. And essentially, we were talking about like the standard conversation. Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I hated that question, man. Um, we all hated I saw it. myself in the same exact spot, quite literally the same exact spot where I was at. So I didn't want to waste the next five, 10 years. And everyone told me like, yeah, you're probably right. Nothing's going to change. Like you could be the best, the most innovative teacher ever. Nothing's going to change just because that's the way things have always been. That's the way the educational space works. It is what it is. So I basically impact. quit my job at the, the, the pinnacle, at the zenith of it, and um, came back to Bosnia. I was figuring out what to do, and um, I had already done prior to that like five, good five, six years of marketing for myself because I used to do music before I was a teacher. So really? I already had the experience building websites. I already had the okay. experience you know, as a strategist. I already had the experience writing um, PR, social media, all of that. So I just started writing copy online and long story short, after years of building and building and building, I decided to share all of that knowledge and all of that experience with the world. LinkedIn was quite literally the first platform that came to mind just because at that point it was the only professional platform that was also a social media platform. Everything mm -hmm. else was either or. And LinkedIn right. was the perfect blend of both. So I tried it in 2020. Yeah, 2020. I failed after five days. I quit. In 2021, like I tried us. it again. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. In 2021, I tried it again, lasted for five weeks. I quit again. But then in 2022, 
I started with an entirely different approach and it worked. And now I'm sharing quite literally everything I know with the world, with the followers, with people I don't even know, but it's working and the business is growing. Um, we've completely changed the course of how branding is done on LinkedIn. We're hiring mm -hmm. new people. Um, you know, things are moving fast to tell you the truth. And here I am with you. Like we met through LinkedIn, like just exactly. in, a, in a random <laughs> comment section somewhere. I don't even know where, you know, I, but I here know, we are. I know we discussed to meet in uh, Sarajevo last year, but we uh, yep. didn't get to uh, meet each other. But yeah, I think it did was Did you actually comments. come to Sarajevo last year? Yeah, I did. Twice. Yeah, I think the reason was <laughs> you were there, but I traveled that same week somewhere else to a different conference. Yeah, something similar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you started writing, I read your interview on Forbes, uh, mm. so you started writing for like, I think it was $8 per hour. Oh yeah. Now you're $8 charging. an hour. That yeah. was my first hourly rate, $8 an hour. That's right. Now, now online. you're charging. Yeah. Online. Upward. Yeah. And in the real world, like when I was actually working as a teacher and everything, like that was even lower. Mm. So yeah, online, $8 an hour. That's where I started. So you grew like now you're charging probably like hundreds of dollars per hour. <clears throat> yeah, right now How we're at a thousand dollars an hour for a consultation and for for other things for coaching and for workshops. It's even more than that. Yeah. Can you say that LinkedIn actually helped you on your path to raising your prices and getting better clients? To say, one hundred percent. LinkedIn is the reason why we're doing this and why we were able to raise the prices, why we were able to grow the business exponentially. The reason why we were able to hire more people, to train more people, and to, mm. to then hire them on the team. And 100% um, it is all due to LinkedIn as a platform, like what it stands for. Um, obviously, the approach I've used has been vaguely different from what a lot of people have used on the platform. Uh, I choose to give it all away. I don't gatekeep. I don't place anything behind a link or a downloadable, which is kind of bad for the long term to tell you the truth i'm missing a lot of subscribers on my newsletter mm -hmm. i mean but at the same time i'm not missing anything i'm still getting a lot of subscribers even outside of linkedin i'm still getting bookings and invites and projects and speaking gigs and business outside of linkedin but primarily it has a lot to do with what we have built there and and just the way we share things i feel like when you share everything and people see it and it's not just sharing, like anyone can share stuff, right? You can Google information, you can share it. The thing is, it's applicable. That was always the goal for me and my content. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted my rule. So even to this day, my rule is if I'm sharing a particular strategy, I want you to be able to implement it 10 seconds right after you read my post. And that used to bug me a lot on a lot of the content that I was consuming back when I, uh, back when, you know, before I even started on LinkedIn, like I would consume something and it would say all the right things. Like, yeah, sure. You should optimize your profile. You should do this. You should do that. But the how was missing. And even if they but did tell me the how, oh, you should simplify the message. Sure. But how do I simplify the message? Right. The, the for me, more, it worked for them, but not for you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, because I wanted people to not have any other questions after the post is already out. Mm -hmm. I feel like for a lot of folks, it's a reverse. The post is a means to get more questions, whether to a newsletter, whether through a booking. No, my, my approach is essentially, I want to give you everything in that freaking post. So as soon as you read it, you're able to implement it. Obviously, not a whole lot of people will, you know, will be ready, will be able to implement it. They're going to feel scared. They're going to still seek the guidance of an expert. And that's how to, you know, that's essentially how the model works. You sell um, the implementation, but you share the sauce, you share everything. And it works. It works like a charm. Like thousands are now doing it finally, you know, following in the footsteps, which is great because the competitiveness is much higher. I feel like the quality of the content is also growing on LinkedIn, where everyone feels the need to not just dish out generic advice, where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you should optimize your profile. Sure, yes, but how? So I feel like you're going to see a whole lot more, at least in the two, last two years, I've seen an exponential 
increase in how to posts, but also from how to I've seen a very, very, um, very large dip, I would say in the standard how to posts and a very large rise in how I posts where and people are you can giving, too. Yeah, exactly. So it's essentially the, the what I call the Google versus you um, mm. challenge where it's like how to stuff you can Google that. But if you tell me how I, or essentially in this case, how you, Al, did something and how it can serve me, I can't find that anywhere else other than on your posts, on your profile, on your LinkedIn. And um, yeah, anyhow, this is, I feel like we're already diving deeper into a, a, another conversation, a deeper conversation. Go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 go ahead. I like it because I think you posted today, give them something for free, something valuable. And yeah. um I like your strategy because I think to gain trust at your potential customers, I think you need to give them something valuable first in order to sell them later on whatever service or product. 100%. I feel like if you want to coach people, show them how you coach. So your content should essentially be the preview of what they're going to get. Like exactly. show exactly how you're explaining those concepts, show exactly how you're providing the roadmap, those one, two, threes, those step-by-steps, those frameworks, those ABCs. You need to demonstrate before the coaching even starts. You're essentially coaching for free in your posts. You're coaching like free for trial. free in every comment you write. So you got to do it. Yeah. So as a copywriter, um, there's a flood of AI tools for easier copywriting on LinkedIn everywhere. How do you look at those options? Do you use any of AI tools? As far as writing goes, I don't use any AI tool whatsoever. Never have. Okay. Because I feel like, and I've, and I've had this conversation with a lot of folks, especially in the AI space. I feel like AI for writing is not even close to AI for other things like for design, for uh, programming or uh, video calls and conferencing and summarizing things and giving you ideas. For writing specifically, the thing that bugs me is that people who swear by AI writing tools, the reasoning is, oh, it helps you get there faster. It helps you get an idea faster. It helps you get down to the final result faster. I've tried it every single time I do it, do exactly as they say. I'm slower. Like I'm quite literally slower. The prompting, the fine tuning, the editing, it takes so much time mm -hmm. where I start to ask myself, like, why the hell am I doing this in the first place? Like I can just do without all of this and I'll still get possibly to the same result, if not better, without all the AI. Like, I'm not saying it's not helpful. I'm just saying it's not there yet in terms of all the other AI tools, like for design, productivity, whatever. So I, I don't use it. I genuinely don't use it, any of the AI tools. And I'm not worried that it will replace copywriters, barring anyone who's like below average. If you're a below average writer, sure, AI has already replaced you, to be fair. But if you're anything above average, no, you shouldn't be worried. I'm not worried. And um, I don't think AI can quite reach the level of the psychological prowess that is needed exactly. for real, real writing. And I, I've even devised my own frameworks for writing that I teach clients. I provide coaching and training for that. I share my framework on keynotes and stages around the world. I've even told people, use it, please. Here you go. Feed your AI. Here's my framework. Like Here's my legit step-by-step -step framework that I use. Feed it to your um, GPT, whatever you use. And let's see who's going to produce the better result. You, uh, an average writer who's simply following the steps that I've given you, or AI, every single time. It's not 9 out of 10. 10 times out of 10, the human wins. Why? Because psychology is at play. Emotions. GPT is learning from what you feed it. You know? Yeah. And a human can think by themselves. So... It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep conversation, but just to summarize my answer, I'm not worried about AI for writers. 
I feel like anyone who wants to use AI can use it to maybe give them ideas for idea generation. It's good. But for expecting AI to give you that final piece of writing ain't happening. AI is a tool. AI is nothing more than a tool, but AI is not the solution. You know, you know, the thing is, I know a lot of founders actually hire ghost writers to write the stuff for them. But in my opinion, nobody can get your voice the way you can do. Because only you walk that path you did. Only you can think the way you can think. And nobody can actually get into your head and write the way you do. So mm. I wrote it a couple of days ago, I think. Every founder should be a, should learn how to write on LinkedIn, on social media, on blog, everywhere. Because that's actually the thing that will help them grow their personal brand and their company. Mm. I agree in terms of the skill, Al. I feel like I've said this before in, in other places. Writing is the number one skill you can learn in 2024 and beyond. Writing is definitely something that every CEO, every founder, every entrepreneur, every college student, doesn't matter where you are in your career, writing is never going to fail you because it's the reason is simple. Writing encompasses speaking, social media communication, yeah. PR, videos, text, everywhere you go. The communication actually starts with the writing because if you look at YouTube videos, what do you actually say? You say what you've written in a script. So you first have to write the script. If you're a president giving a speech to the nation, what do you do? You write a speech. If you're on social media, you write. If you're giving a TED talk, you write. Again, writing is the basis of communication. And I feel like learning that skill is much more valuable than using the tools to help you save time. Right. You know, you just not writing at all. And you feel like, oh, yeah, let me just do that. Um, to your point about ghostwriting, I actually don't have a problem with, with people using ghostwriters. The reason is simple. There's bad ghostwriting and there's good ghostwriting. The bad ghostwriting, sure, I agree 100%. But I know a lot of good ghostwriters. And the secret is really in the process. Um, you as someone who uses ghostwriters, if you're a CEO or a founder who's just hired someone, I know because I train other writers, the thing I train them on is also process. You have to be in tune, constantly speaking to your mm -hmm. client. Um, the, the bad ghostwriting example is essentially you take a brief from a client, you write it, and then you send it to the client and that's and it. That's it. <laughs> The better version is you align with the client via either weekly calls or bi-weekly calls where you always get the feedback and you constantly fine-tune. You're always talking to your writer so that they could understand exactly what sort of even little nuanced words you are or are not using. If someone wrote a quote that is not in your style, it's saying the right thing, but it's not in your style. Again, you have the chance to tell them. So ghost writing is essentially not only writing, it's also coaching your client as well. There's a little bit of coaching in mm. there uh, from both ends. So the client is coaching you on their tone of voice and you're teaching them on you know, what good writing is supposed to be. And then when those two worlds align, that's when you can get really good, really, really um, great results. Because great ghost writing to me is you're essentially a team you're not just some contractor out there who's like, hey, I need five posts uh, you know, for next week. No. And if your client is expecting you to do that, you can just educate them. You can tell them what the actual process is supposed to be. So if you're listening, right. if you're a writer, have calls with your clients as well, very frequently. If you're a client who wants to use ghostwriters, come to me. I have writers. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you're a client... <laughs> who wants to use ghostwriters and make sure that you're also talking to them. You, you can't just say, hey, I need five posts on XYZ. No, always, always, always be involved in the process. I actually like the strategy one company did that um, they recorded all the 
to- the talkings, the session between the CEO or founder and the ghostwriter, which is better because you can hear the way they are saying things. You can actually write more emotionally, I think, as if they would just send you a brief and here you go, 10 posts for LinkedIn this month. So <laughs> I think it, that's better way of doing it. I agree. I agree. And, and AI is, to be fair, used in this scenario. And it is very useful mm-hmm. in this scenario where you can just plug something into all your calls and it can summarize and it can give you ideas. It can give you pointers where, or you can even pre record stuff and then the AI can do that for you. Yeah. It has, again, it has very good applicability outside of writing I'll, I'll always say that ai is great for productivity for taking notes for summarizing stuff i use it for that for for calls and um mm. for 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 actionable items for clients afterwards um but yeah again ai for writing no i'm not impressed not at all not yet probably yeah. for a long time <laughs> most likely i, yeah. I am 100 percent certain of that most likely Okay, let's go back to LinkedIn. So you you mentioned that you failed a couple of times, like I did, like we all did before. Don't remind me of that, Al. <laughs> Don't remind me, man. I mean, the hardest thing to keep up is to show up every single day and to write something. I had a problem with this last year. I actually had writer's block for like six months. Wow. I sat down, I tried to write something, nothing came out (laughs) and I really had a problem with getting motivated every day to show up, to write something, to comment on other posts and I couldn't do it. So I took a break, came back. Hopefully this time I'll keep doing it, but we all failed at some point and um, either was we didn't have motivation either we didn't know how to write either it was i don't know we didn't have time and then we stopped doing it what's your advice on someone for someone who actually just keep just showed up started doing it to actually start showing every single day that's a great question because it's something that i know a lot of people are struggling with myself included during my early days i i like to give this advice to people and i'm not saying it's the best advice in the world Mm -hmm. but i just like giving this piece of advice if you're not ready to write just yet especially consistently where you feel like, okay, I have 10 ideas, you know, for 10 posts, but outside of those 10, I'm empty. I have nothing. After 10 days, you're going to get stuck. Like you're not going to have more ideas. You're going to be stuck in this place where you feel like, I don't know what to do. What's my next step? What's my next post? How do I write something new that excites me? How do I write something that's not a blatant copy paste version of what I've already written just last week or two weeks ago? The advice I always give to people is you start with comments. Don't start with writing posts. No, actually stay off publishing content for for like three, four weeks, a month. Okay. Only, only, only participate in the comments and in the conversations within the replies of other people's posts. Only do that. Why? Comments are much faster. Writing posts, Writing just one sometimes takes an an hour plus. You know that. I know. It's much faster, A. Second of all, commenting is also writing. Like, we might not realize it, but it actually is. You're writing. And this then helps you build this habit of showing up. I like to say that 50% of success on LinkedIn, I attribute to showing up. Just showing up. The other part is everything else. But the reason is why most people don't show up is they find it hard to produce that next piece of content and they're stuck in time and space where they're not producing. If you're just commenting, you're producing, you're showing up, you're already there. People see you, you see other people, you connect, you get followers and you're always sharing. That's the third point I like to, I like to always make. You're sharing, but you're not overthinking it. 
And when I we're just... writing posts, we're sharing, but we are overthinking it. With comments, we're not. With comments, we're really not doing it. So the goal is essentially to write every day, not posts. To show up every day, but not publishing. And to share an insight every single day, but not overthink it. It's much easier to spend an entire month just mm -hmm. leaving, let's say, 20, 30 comments per day. Really good comments, super insightful. And then after the month is over, you go back to your comments. You scroll back through everything you've written. I do this religiously every single day. To this day, Al, I do this every day. And this is how I'm able to always keep my content fresh. And, you know, we call it repurposing, but it essentially is just creating at scale. So what I do is I'll scroll back through every comment that I've written. And so mm -hmm. in your case, you can scroll back, you know, a month back. Check which comments actually received a nice response from people. So if some of the comments have received, you know, some likes, some replies from people, that's your sign that it could work as a post. It's already validated. Essentially, other people have told you, you've written something nice, you've written something valuable. So why not simply take a mini post, which is a comment, and create a larger piece of content around it? You already have the gist of it. You already have the main point you want to come across. You might already have the structure. You're just missing some bits, and that's it. That's what I do at the end of every single day. I kid you not, Al. At the end of every single day, I'll scroll back through my comment section. Essentially, I go to, so for the people who are listening, if you're on your LinkedIn profile, you open up your profile, you scroll down, and you go to view all activity. So you're going to see those posts, comments, videos, whatever. Click on comments, and it's going to show you every comment you've left in chronological order. So I scroll back, you know, in my case, because I do it every day, I scroll back 24 hours, mm -hmm. and I'll try to find at least one at least one, usually there's more, but at least one comment where I feel like people really resonated with it. Okay. And out of that, I will just literally copy paste it. I will put it in my authored up draft and I will start just writing more around it. So if it's missing an intro, I'll add an intro. If it's missing a conclusion, I'll add a conclusion. If it's missing a PS, I'll add a PS and bam, I have a brand new post. Now I can do this every day. And essentially, I will have a fresh post every single day, which is, when you look at it deeper, rooted in a conversation that is current on the platform. People are already talking about it. And now you're chiming in with your point of view. But if you do this throughout the year, and on top of that, you're also producing that content where ideas are already overflowing your head, you're going to have content ideas all the time. And you have no trouble showing up because the right. ideas are already there. Because you're just showing up in the easiest way possible. Comments to me are just this gateway to more content, to more relationships, to conversions even. I treat them as that. I like hanging out in the comment sections of LinkedIn. Doesn't matter where it is. I try to be supportive of everyone. I try to, every single time I comment something, I try to you know, have it be a reflection of me and my brand something positive, something uplifting, something super smart and applicable. So that then at the end of the day, essentially what you're getting is if people have seen those 20, 30 comments in one day, what happened was people who've seen you 20, 30 times, every single one of those times they've seen you, you have provide some, provided something valuable for them. And that is untouchable. That is an unmatched strategy on LinkedIn. If every single time people see you, you're dishing out value after value after value, even if it's just in the form of a mini post, a comment, you're mm -hmm. winning. There's no way around it. You're winning. Plus, you solve the problem of creating content and scale and always having ideas and always pushing the boundaries. You're winning 100%. So that's the advice I like to give to people. Don't start with posting. Start with commenting first. Get into the groove of things on LinkedIn. Put yourself at ease of sharing and essentially exposing yourself, letting people see you. And then when you're ready, when you have enough ideas, when you see that idea creation and generation in your head is super easy, then you can just turn those, you know, mini comments into mini posts. There you go. So you actually use the reverse strategy. Most of, most of us, including me, do the long copy and then break it down to shorter posts. No, I do. You... I actually do. Nice strategy. 
very interesting. So not only comments are great uh, co conversation starters and for great for relationships, but you can also use them for ideas of what to post and for inspiration. So there you, for, go. you summarized it well. <laughs> for example, if I'm a SaaS founder, I should start commenting first just to get in LinkedIn, to get into LinkedIn, to practice my copywriting, and then I should start writing my own posts after I show up every day for at least a month. Yeah, essentially, get your gears turning, right? If, if you got an old car, it's very hard to expect it to run very smoothly at the mm. very first start. No, you got to service it. You got to fine tune it. You got to get it ready. And then after a month of, you know, doing all the little repairs and fixing and tuning it up and blah, 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 then you can expect to go out into the street and it will consistently, every single day, it will be the car that you actually dreamed of having. But if you just fire it up after 20 years of sitting in a freaking barn and you just fire it up and you expect it to run every single day, it's not happening. It's not happening. I'm sorry. So you essentially, you got to get the gears turning first, and then right. you should, you know, consider doing doing faster and longer mileage and all that. You you don't get out running twenty miles on a first day, right? Exactly. <laughs> very very true. You start with those little jogs, and then the longer jogs, exactly. and then you go into you know the the high mileage. So when you first showed up on LinkedIn, uh. Did you know what your niche was? Obviously copywriting, but did you know what you're going to write about? Or did you just start writing and see how it goes? When I first joined LinkedIn, I knew what I wanted to write about. And that thing now, years later, is not the same thing. It evolved. It changed. Essentially, at the very beginning, I always tell people, just list five things you're good at, like something you're really good at in your career, in your job. doesn't matter what role you're in. doesn't matter uh, what level you're in. If you're a manager, a CEO, or if you're just starting out, you're an intern, list five things you're good at. And then ditch two. Find three things that are very, very close knit, very close to each other. Like at the right. very beginning, I'll, I'll give you my example. At the very beginning, what I was doing is I was talking about just general copywriting. I was talking about advertising. So ads in particular, because I did a lot of ad copy back mm -hmm. in the day. I was talking about websites. So still website copywriting, just another niche. I was talking about brand strategy and, and or brand messaging. And I was talking about personal branding. So out of all of those, what I noticed over time is people actually leaned in more into the general copywriting versus the ads and the websites. And it made sense because copywriting is much closer to personal branding than website writing is close to personal brand. Right. So I landed on three things in, in the end. I landed on copywriting. Uh, brand strategy and personal branding. Those three were really tight knit. They were really close to each other. And then over time, again, it was like phase two. Over time, I noticed that a lot of people were, again, uh, more reacting to copywriting and personal branding and not so much their brand strategy part. So I started, I mean, this was just a natural, I feel like evolution. As, if you're using LinkedIn very consistently, after a few months, you're going to discover something of your own. You're going to dis discover something that works for you. And you're going to share that in a post. Essentially, you're going to be talking about LinkedIn on LinkedIn. Everyone does this. It doesn't matter what niche you're in. Everyone at some point is going to write a post where you talk about LinkedIn on LinkedIn. And that's mm -hmm. totally fine. What happened with me was a very surprising thing. At the very beginning, and this is, I know this is going to sound funny, I hated LinkedIn coaches. I just, I couldn't stand it because no matter what they told me, it didn't work. Like it genuinely didn't work. I tried all those tips and it didn't work. So what I started doing is I was like, heck, let me try something of my own. Let me try, you know, this particular strategy. I tried it and it worked for me. Okay. Like just for me at the very beginning. So what I did, Al, was 
I shared it with the world. And at that point I had like three followers, but for those three followers, it worked. And they started sharing it to their folks and I got a dozen more followers. So at that point I had like 15 followers. That's fine. So I shared another LinkedIn tip like a couple of weeks later that worked for me. And I mind you, I didn't want to talk about LinkedIn. I was just doing this because just naturally as I was experimenting and I saw that the first time I shared it, it helped people. I was like, you know, let me try something else. If it works, you know, I can share some more. It had a really good reaction. It brought some good followers, blah, blah, blah. And I did. I tried something new again. I shared it with the world and people tried it. It worked for them as well. So after a while, I was trying out a bunch of LinkedIn strategies and maybe like once every two weeks, I would write a LinkedIn post, you know, just LinkedIn strategy, growth hack tip, whatever you want to call it. Right. And after a while, I noticed that people really were like into it. The one dead giveaway was when people sent me a DM, there was one person at the beginning, but then very soon after, like the next week and the next week, I started getting people consistently in my DMs asking for LinkedIn coaching. I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. I was laughing in those DMs when they first asked me. Like I was genuinely just pushing them away. I didn't even tell them, hey, I know a great LinkedIn coach. Let me refer you to them. I just laughed and I was, I was just like, lol. That was my reaction, lol. Unprofessional. <laughs> but I, it was very surprising to me. Like, why would you come to me for LinkedIn coaching? I don't even talk about that stuff. But the thing was, when I look back, you know, at the content, like every two weeks, I did talk about the stuff. Like I did actually share some good tips. And then week after week after week, people started coming to my DMs and they were actually very serious about, you know, getting coaching for me. And I was like, you know what? Let me see how this is going to go. <laughs> and I accepted one call at the very beginning. Okay. Um, it did pretty well. I accepted another one, did well. And I was like, let me just create an offer. I'll just put, you know, power hour. I call it a power hour. Mm. To this day, that power hour is my most booked thing ever. So I didn't want to do it, but just the nature of creating content consistently and how you evolve as a content creator, like you're going to find your niche or the niche is going to find you. Essentially, if you're just giving it all away, very honestly, very genuinely, where you have only one goal, hey, this is working for me. Hey, people, here you go. It might work for you. That's how I've approached exactly. LinkedIn since day one. And I always advise people to approach it the same way. Otherwise, if you go and become really super duper strategic about it, that's the strongest way to burnout and disappointment. Because if you really devise a super duper strong strategy at the very beginning and it doesn't work out, where do you go? You go right, right back to the beginning. And that is a problem. But if you approach it, you know, from, from a, from a standpoint where you're like, yeah, I, I know this, I know that, I know this, this is what I'm going to talk about. And over time, it may evolve, I may find something new. Then over time, you may just ditch one thing out of the process. You're not ditching the whole process. So I always advise people to just figure it out. Essentially, don't go into LinkedIn thinking, you know, you have this big master plan. You know exactly what you're going to be talking about. Because no one don't. <laughs> yeah, no one knows. No. Not even the biggest creators on the platform, the people with the hundreds of thousands of followers, the people making, you know, tens of thousands of dollars per day. No, no one had it figured out at the very beginning. So just keep posting, keep figuring it out over time. It's going to be very apparent what's working versus what's, what's not. not. All you do is optimize the process, ditch what doesn't work, lean into what does work add to it, remove, so on and so forth. So I feel like I've given you two answers here. One was essentially my journey. The other one was, how, you know, how I would approach it if I was someone else. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun process. Feels, feels like we're having LinkedIn masterclass right here on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you, people man. will get a lot out of it because it's, it's really a lot of value in here so thank you for coming once again so to sum this up yasmin any new trends or what's working on linkedin this year <laughs> i could give you the people's answer 
you know, <laughs> just talk about AI, talk about ChatGPT and all that. I always joke with that. Um, but in terms of what's working on LinkedIn, I feel like I'm going to give you a very different answer than a whole lot of other people might. If you write well, that's the most important part of any post. I try not to pay attention to the format, whether the carousels are popping, whether the selfies are popping, whether videos are popping. As long as you can write well, as long as that hook entices people, as long as you have a real continuation of the hook, as long as you have a really good ending, that's what matters, despite the format. That's what matters ultimately. Right. In terms of what's working on, in terms of how to build a following and how to build relationships, how to get, get clients, it's the same old, same old. You got to build those relationships. Now, whether that's in the comments, whether that's in the DMs, whether you're doing free networking chats like coffee chats or whatever, you got to put in the time. A lot of people don't want to put in the time that it takes to build real relationships on the platform. Exactly. So they'll try to fake it. They'll join engagement groups or whatever they call them these days. They'll boost their numbers. But as then as soon as they leave those groups, back at square one. Mm. And yeah, it's, I feel like every single year when people ask me like, hey, what's working now? I feel like it's always the same thing. There are certain things, obviously, yeah, in the algorithm, you know, but that keeps changing. I feel like it's not on a yearly basis. At this point, it's almost on a daily basis. So unless you're following that, you know, you're going to be out of touch with the, the algo anyhow. But as far mm -hmm. as like the real things, like what's working, writing better, 100%. This doesn't matter what format you're using primarily. And also building real relationships. So one thing, if I could give one bit of advice to anyone on LinkedIn this year, never post and ghost. Never post and ghost. There's two real world examples of this happening. Essentially, you force yourself to publish something every single day because you feel like, oh, I have to hit this certain quota. I have to have this many posts in a week. And then what yeah. happens is because you want to have seven posts in a week, and you genuinely don't have time to spend time on each and every one of those engaging as soon as you post. There's your answer. You post something and you're not there. That's literally called posting and ghosting. Don't ever do that. Mm. Don't ever do that. The other thing is, if you're posting and you actually have the time to stay and really nurture those relationships, but you're not investing your time in that because you feel like, oh yeah, I don't want that. And then six months down the line, you're wondering why you're not growing or why you're not getting much more business out of LinkedIn. There's your answer. It really starts with you putting yourself out there and just showing support to others, showing others that you're real. I like to say, Al, people may come for your content, but they stay for you. Ultimately, exactly. they stay for you. They stay for the feeling. They stay for the personality. They stay for knowing that if they comment on a post, they're going to get a response back. It doesn't even have to be from you. It could be from, from other people in a network. Or if they come to your post, they know they're going to read something that's valuable. And that only comes with, you know, consistent not posting and ghosting consistent showing up but for the right reasons if you're just pushing yourself to hit certain quotas and you're not really there investing the time it's not going to work it's not going to work or even if it does work in the rare case you're going to hate the process you're literally going to hate the process and it's yeah if, you're if not you really want to make it. it but you hate the process yeah yeah That's i don't know what it. to say to that yeah <laughs> Yasmin, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we actually chatted for more than an hour. We did? <laughs> we had some problems. Yeah, we did. We started more than an hour ago. <laughs> I could talk to you like for hours now. I know we have to go play with your son, but thank you so much for taking your time for coming and chatting about LinkedIn, personal branding and other stuff. So hope to meet you in person soon. Take care and see you. Thank you so much, Alan. To everyone who's been watching and listening, thank you. And I hope to, to meet all of you soon. So we'll see. Good luck, everyone. See you. Bye.